welcome everybody back here at uh, Siegel Talks. Uh, my name is Frank Henschke and I'm the uh, director of the Siegel Center here at the Graduate Center CUNY at the City University um, of New York um, in Manhattan. And uh, it is another day and another week uh, in uh, Siegel Talks. And uh, we um, just um, had an update about situations in the Ukraine and yesterday about uh, Palestine uh, where the restrictions seem to have worked well, uh, imposed or put in by the Israeli uh, government, also in the um, Palestine territories, and um, and uh, slowly people are going out, but uh, they face a bleak, uh, a bleak uh, situation. There hasn't been real support for this theater before and after, but they have a fierce uh, uh, identity and uh, and a mission to to to. Uh, bring change, social change uh, uh, to a situation that is not working um, for, for so many and it's not, uh, not acceptable. Um, today we have uh, guests uh, from uh, Brazil. We have Roberta uh, Estela del Dalva and Dion Carlos uh, who are uh, here with us. So thank you for, for taking the time um, and um, Danilo uh, will help us to translate um, in case um, they, were, they have open questions. So um, theaters artists, as always, are, as we say, on the right side of history and the right side of justice. Um, they also experience life immediately, uh, in a sense, in a real sense. They anticipate often the future. And um, so it is of a significance and important to listen. And also for us uh, in New York, but all around the world, we really need to know more about local theater practices, uh, theater in Brazil is such a great history, such a long history, such a complex history. The country is so big, so vast, um, and um, we are not always aware as much as we really should be. This virus has shown that we are connected uh, intimately in a way, deeply, um, that the world has become much closer and uh, smaller uh, in the sense of uh, we can talk to you, we travel normally also, but also um, our lives have been uh, uh, confined in closer spaces and we look out at a reality and we have inside uh, uncertainties and we process our information. And in moments of raptures like this, perhaps it's a time where we also have a little uh, insight how we process information. We question the reality where we are in. And that perhaps is a reason why sometimes out of a crisis, new realities emerge in a good way. And um, um, and uh, at least we hope to, where we had Natalia Vorosbit from uh, the Ukraine who said she's anticipating not good things coming out for her country, six years of war. And um, and that the Corona crisis is actually a welcome uh, pause. It's uh, almost like a Christmas time. So it's, uh, it's just uh, oh. stunning around the world to hear what is going on. We heard from India where 500,000 people tried to leave New Delhi on foot to march up to a thousand kilometers home because they couldn't work for the families anymore. Um, they had no place, no work, no income and, and had their babies on the back. So it's a, a complexing Roma families being beaten up by the police uh, without uh, warnings and reasons because they fear that they are spreading the virus. Uh, um, workers in Romania are stuck at borders, not coming back or going out without any protections to to um, fulfill their work um, uh, commission. So it's a, it's a complex uh, a time. And Milo Rao talked about his new vision for theater. Richard Schachner looked back as a history of theater and with that and, and, and uh, is working on a manifesto on things, what we should change. We look at the nuclear reactor where the top has been taken off. We look inside and see a, a reality, a, a disaster situation in the United States. It's uh, shocking that this country, this rich country, this wonderful country, and this uh, inspiring country doesn't seem to find a way to deal with problems. And um, in Brazil, which is also in a way so close uh, to, to, to the North America, the US, um, is also experiencing in a moment, if we understand right, of, um, of uh, uncertainties, of uh, complex uh, uh, problems and uh, political um, uh, guidance that perhaps is not always in the interest of everybody. So uh, we wanted to hear from our friends and colleagues in Brazil. So here's the question, uh, where are you all now? What time is it? And um, are, you, are you under confinement or what's going on in Sao Paulo, where you're from? Uh, he asked where you are, 
é, a cidade, que horas são aí e se você está em quarentena agora, como é que está sendo? É, nós estamos em São Paulo, agora é uma, quatro e cinco, e sim, temos o privilégio de estar em quarentena. Muitas pessoas não podem obedecer à quarentena, precisam comer, mas sim. Yeah, we are in, currently in Sao Paulo, as you said, and it's uh, one o'clock in the afternoon here. Uh, we have been able to maintain the quarantine, but unfortunately it's, uh, it's a privilege in the current situation here. For how long um, is the quarantine? I know the winter is approaching, uh, or fall or winter. So how long has the quarantine been in place? 60 uh, days. 60 days, né? Yeah. Uh, é, há quanto tempo está a quarentena e qual a previsão, você acha que não? É, eu acho que a gente vai ter mais alguns, alguns meses pela frente. Vai ser inevitável. Por mais que haja pressão para não, é uma questão de sobrevivência. Yeah, uh, we believe that even though winter is nearing and obviously there are certain risks that may come by, it should maintain for quite a few more months. Mm -hmm. So how are maybe, um, Roberta, you can also tell us, how are the restrictions? Um, um, what can you go out? Do we have to fill out a form like in France? Um, um, what, are, what are the conditions? In Italy, you can only go 100 meters around your house or to the next, next uh, uh, store where you can buy food or pharmacy. Everything else is forbidden. Um, how, how, how is the situation in Brazil and how has it been introduced to this population? Bom, ele está perguntando como é que está a situação aqui no Brasil, né? Que tipo de dinâmica que a gente tem de, de fechamento? Well, we we don't have like, like a lockdown properly. Uh, we you have don't. some. We, we don't uh, still because what we have here is a war between the government from the states and the government from the country, the president and the governors, because mm -hmm. the governors say stay home, it's dangerous. We have uh, more than 10,000 people dead. And our president, it's working against it. He's saying it's just a, a lightly flu. So he, he's, he, he's making a, a, a on contrary service and he, he's messing out. Uh, he changed the minister of health here, a health man of mm -hmm. common, common health. And it's a mess because this is really uh, making people being confused. And so we, we have a situation, people from the States telling stay home and our president going into television, going to the lives and Instagram and say, uh, we can stop, Brazil can't stop. So enterprises and fabrics are going to die. But Mr. This president, people are dying. That's yeah. it more or less. Então, eu estou yeah. falando que a gente tem um conflito aqui. I'm just translating for Brazilian people. É um conflito aqui do, do presidente com, e o, os governadores dos estados falando para a gente ficar em casa e o presidente falando para a gente sair. Então, a gente tem um, 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 uh -huh. não tem um lockdown e tem um conflito de interesse, né? Enquanto o presidente fala, saiam, porque a economia não pode morrer, porque as empresas não podem morrer. E, né, e desprezando que pessoas estão quase... Mais de 10 mil pessoas morreram. Yeah. Resumindo, foi isso que eu falei. Yeah. It might be a bit too complicated if we translate everything back into uh, uh, into into uh, Portuguese also. Um, but um, it's uh, good, good that we try to uh, give give some explanation. But so the president of Brazil, of course, and the world is wondering, and they don't understand um, why he is not taking um, this um, um, serious. So how is the situation for theater artists? Are theaters open? Are they closed? Um, are there rehearsals going on? What is happening? Ele está se perguntando, o mundo inteiro está se perguntando porque o presidente não segue, ele quer saber como é que está a situação dos artistas de teatro aqui no Brasil, e se eles estão abertos, se estão funcionando ou não, e como está a situação dos artistas. É, no momento, nós estamos parados. Eu li uma notícia que os artistas da Europa sofrem uma pressão para abrir os teatros, nós estamos sofrendo uma pressão para deixar de existir. Então, é, nesse momento, a Há uma dificuldade muito grande de voltar, ou mesmo de se organizar, devido à situação extrema que os artistas uhum. estão enfrentando aqui. 
so uh, she saw news that in certain countries of Europe, there's been an urge by the government and by the people for theaters to reopen and to engage in, in open performances. Uh, in here, it's, uh, it's the extreme opposite. We are, there's a pressure not only for them to be closed down, but for them to cease to, to exist. So it's a, it's a deep crisis and theater artists have, have very few resources to actually maintain their, their craft. So for 60 days, also theaters have been closed. Yeah. Yeah, theater stores and, and just the essence is, uh, basic service are open like food service. And what happened, it was when Bolsonaro entered, he killed the culture ministry. So- uh, It doesn't <laughs> it exist a, anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. No. And the situation, is getting better, um, uh, worse, 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 and worse for the artists because Corona came in a time that we were already in a tough situation with theaters closing, with artists in a very bad situation of space and money and breathing. Yeah. breathing. <laughs> so it is a plan. So the, when he came in, uh, he closed down the Ministry of Culture is no longer existing. This was on his political agenda to close down any support for the arts. See, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. was not fully aware of this. This is, of course, a shocking news. So that means uh, there is no help, uh, no uh, funding in place to support Brazilian artists. That significa que não tem fundos para ajudar artistas brasileiros. É, o que acontece hoje é um fundo de emergência que foi liberado e muitos artistas não conseguem sacar o recurso. É, o que tem acontecido agora é uma organização social feita pelos próprios artistas, principalmente voltada para os artistas da periferia, para a gente ajudar, principalmente com a alimentação, com cestas básicas. É nesse nível que a gente se encontra aqui no momento. Yeah, the government released uh, an, emergency, an emergency fund for for all, all the population and for artists as well. Uh, but most of them have not been able to, to grab the money, to seize the money. And so what happened is that there's been a, a unity uh, in the artist community to, um, and theater particularly, to help uh, get food for these people. So it's been made mostly the artists trying to help out the artists so that they can survive. So artists basically would be starving um, right now. There's um, no help. Uh, also in New York City, as a mother, well, they were for the next eight, nine months, there are no jobs, the musicians, all the gigs have been canceled. There are no, of course, no, uh, no payments from theaters. There's even a case of a big regional theater that demanded a playwright to pay back the commissioning fee, even though the playwright has already started writing. Um, so what do you do then in Brazil? Um, 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 if, you don't have a theater, they're all closed. There's no support. There's no Ministry of Culture. Um, what is your, what is the future? We are fucked up. <laughs> well, just, I'm, I'm kidding, but it's not for kidding. The situation is we are trying, we are uh, having conversations and trying to see what we're going to do and debating and talking to each other, but nobody knows the answer trying to do things together because it's a time that alone like trying to save yourself we are going nowhere like collective solutions collective thoughts uh, trying to to write uh, stuff and and first of all the basic necessities like support this this project they give food because without food what is theater if if if, if the person is starving uh, but we, we don't see a horizon because theater is the, is the presence art, you know? You can sing, you can uh, project a movie, or stream a movie, but theater, you need the public. And the discussion is, is, is there a theater without public and actors together in a room? Is this theater st still, if, if you don't have it, the, the presence that is a... a, 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 a uh, essential question in theater. And we don't know because in, I don't know if it's in September we'll be able to be together in a room, even in December, because the things will open, but will, will theaters will be open? 
to us be together. And I don't know, I, I heard that in Italy, they are going to put like a person and three seats and another person and three seats, but I don't know. Yeah, the next row empty and then a gun one, yeah. And people will have to wear masks. How, how will that look like? This is a, this is a big, uh, big uh, question. I think from our friends in Tia Warsaw in Poland, in Warsaw, um, they have been put on the same list as massage salons. Only when massage salons can open, also the theaters will open, which they felt as a clear insult against, uh, of course, the theater a community and uh, which they do not really want at the moment also to hear from. How is the situation? How was it before, like doing a theater in Sao Paulo um, um, before coronavirus? Let's say, tell us a little bit, was it already complicated or there a support or, how do you experience this? I know you also work in television and in film also, both of you, but how is this theater situation at the moment in Sao Paulo? How was the situation antes do the coronavirus to the theater in si? Teatro, teatro aqui sempre uh, foi muito independente. Uh, a gente sempre contou com a gente. Tem um lema no Brasil que diz nós por nós. Eu acho que o teatro é isso no Brasil. Mas, é, claro, sei que Roberta e eu também, a gente é, tinha uma agenda de trabalho, né? A gente traba sempre trabalhou bastante é, e, de repente, isso foi tirado, né? São Paulo é uma cidade muito privilegiada nesse sentido porque tem muitos teatros. É, nós temos aqui uma instituição é, que, que apoia muito o teatro, né? Temos algumas instituições voltadas para a cultura que apoiam o teatro, que apoiam os artistas de teatro. Então, nós saímos de uma situação muito privilegiada, né, com um trabalho, com uma agenda cheia, para nada, praticamente. Uh, uh, the theater in São Paulo has always been very independent, in a way, so uh, they have institutions that contribute to theater in here. There are a lot more theaters than in most places in Brazil. Uh, but then, after the government came in, they sort of lost all their jobs, and they have been they had full agendas and they could actually perform the work. But uh, even before the virus, uh, it was all such shut down. And this is in a logic where it's a privilege to be in Sao Paulo and the opportunities are already not that extensive uh, in the country. So the, the government sh shut down theaters in Sao Paulo and uh, when, when Bolzano came in, they closed theaters? No, not the government, the, the artists, I think. The artists by them, themselves uh, clo closed because we, we didn't get the Bolsonaro hint of it's just a flu. We because the Ministry of was... Culture closed and there was no more support for uh, running the theaters or? Yeah, I have a, a particular case that I, we were, we had the headquarters of my company. I'm part of a company called Nucleo mm -hmm. Bartolomeu de Depoimentos. It's a hip hop theater company that mixes elements from the hip hop culture with the epic theater from Bertolt Brecht. And we had this, this headquarter, our place, and it was just, we were kicked off the place and they, they, como fala Danilo, demolido? They put, the, they demolished the place to put uh, some buildings. We have the a gentrification process in Pompeia, the and neighborhood Pompeia. that the, the, the theater was in. And we were kick it out, literally kick it out. And they just demolished, put the, the, the place down. In a city that have like one theater for uh, 1,040 habitant, inhabitants. So it's a very few theaters for the quantity of people even being privileged it's uh, 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 a very few, um, small quantity of theater we have here. So, yeah, so I think it is. I think I was in Pompeii, Pompeii Theater, which was part of ASCII, and uh, that theater has been closed down. And yeah, and we were kicking it off. We have this. this what happened in the, the neighborhood, the gentrification, they bought very, very cheap and they put like a Whole Foods in supermarkets, like it happens in Harlem or Williamsburg, mm -hmm. you know, the gentrification problem that it's all over, it's yeah. going all over. And so culture, uh, buildings are more important than culture 
for this this government and this, all this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, what was what were the ideas of the theater scene in Sao Paulo and um, even before the corner? Was it the idea to find new spaces, or you felt it was kind of a resignation? People gave up uh, to make a contribution to the cultural life of the city. That theater was is just no longer possible. É, quais, quais eram os planos para os artistas? Acho que era uma questão, era uma, uma questão de encontrar novos espaços ou as pessoas simplesmente resignaram no teatro como se não consideravam mais o teatro como uma arte possível de ser feita em São Paulo? Uh, não, pelo contrário. É, nós uh, tínhamos aqui, é, tivemos aqui, inclusive por conta de algumas iniciativas dos próprios grupos de teatro, que conseguiram viabilizar é, fomentos uh, que ajudaram os grupos a se manterem, para não acontecer o que aconteceu com o grupo Núcleo Bartolomeu de Depoimentos e com tantos outros que fecharam as portas, é, havia um cenário múltiplo né, de um teatro com pesquisas variadas. Então, o teatro existia e era muito vivo e diverso na cidade. Uh, the theater companies, they were... Uh, creating funds to make sure that all this could survive. So there, they had, there was going on a, a diversification in terms of research and publics they were approaching and an extensive uh, research in terms of what could touch more people. So they were still fighting and they were still trying to find solutions mm -hmm. to make sure that they would, would remain solid and that they could maintain their, their work. Even Bartolomeo, our, my company that was kicked off of the space, we continued. We were like in, in rented space, place from, from so friends uh, brought us together under the, the wing to, for us to, to continue. And last year we, we released uh, Terror and Misery in the Third Millennium Improvising Utopias. That is a version of uh, Terror and Misery in the Third Reich from Bertolt Brecht. Mm -hmm. That is incredibly uh, uh, fresh for the mm -hmm. moment because it, it fits like a globe because it's the situation, the, the, the rising of faces is what we, we are living literally so here in Brazil with Bolsonaro. So you both both would say, or um, that you you are witnessing a rise of fascism that openly is hostile to culture. Então as duas diriam que se estão em frente a uma ascensão do fascismo que é abertamente hostil à cultura. Uh, ele, eu diria que ele teme teme a cultura tanto quanto Hitler temia os surrealistas. É o que eu digo. Yeah, uh, it, it's the same. Uh, kind of fear and dread and uh, persecution that perhaps Hitler had with the the third realist uh, class of art. What what are the persecutions at the moment? What what are theater artists uh, have to fear? Quais são as perseguições no momento? Que que os artistas de teatro têm que temer? Don't have food to eat. <laughs> <laughs> right now, right now, everybody's stopped. But in the in the recent past, uh, something, some strange things started to happen, like photographs. We had like uh, interrupted play plays because the artist was naked. Uh, censorship. We have a very uh, close past of a dictatorship very violent, they tortured and killed a lot. It's very close. So these guys are still around trying to, to uh, stop and shut the mouth of those who uh, shout for liberty. So these guys are, we have military, our vice president is a, a captain from the, <laughs> is a military guy, is a military guy. So they are, around a lo lot of censorship little by little started to happen since bolsonaro uh, came into power tem uma coisa que eu queria falar também que é o fato de que houve uma a criação de uma narrativa de demonização dos artistas isso foi criado foi uma história criada e que muita yes. gente acredita 
there was a narrative that was brought forward of uh, of how trying to demonize theater artists in general. And unfortunately, that is a narrative that has spread uh, throughout the nation. And it's it's quite quite well installed. Mm -hmm. So theater artists are, are demonized. Tell us about the interruptions of shows. What happened? As in interruptions of shows, follow my son. Yeah, there are some examples, for, uh, for example, uh, Jesus, there's a version of John, John Clifford's uh, Jesus, I don't know the name in English, Jesus, the Queen of Heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the name in English to show. In Brazil, in, Bra in Portuguese, is Jesus, the Rainha do Céu. So Renata, the actress who was uh, playing it, holding this, she was interrupted or, or, or uh, people came to protest, you're not going to do this here. And some people like doing ameaças, como é que é Danilo? People trying to intimidate right. them by the inter threads, by internet, or we have something called Bolsonarismo here, who was the, the huge fans of Bolsonaro and they mm. are fanatics just as Hitlerism was in German. Uh, like they are really, but right now we have the, 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 the net and Facebook and all this, this stuff. So the fake news, we had uh, since politics till artists been victims of this fake news and saying that uh, ah, absurd. So it's a terror made by in on, on the net, but also with, with treads, real treads, body by body in, in front of theaters, in the gate of the, in the enter of the place that the, the play would be shown. Mm -hmm. Brazil acaba sendo uma espécie de uh, lugar uh, me parece, às vezes, que a gente é cobaia de um projeto de necropolítica instaurado. Isso já há muito tempo. Acho que o Brasil é a vanguarda da necropolítica, de alguma forma. E a gente está sentindo os efeitos, está sofrendo as ações disso. Uh, she believes that Brazil has been sort of uh, an experiment for a type of necropolitics that happens for decades now. And the the main consequence is that we're seeing this there's been a a project that has been put in place as to deem those who are more or less worthy of of being of you know they are living in them the good citizens so there's been this project going on i think this is uh it took its it it took its place right now after the bolsonaro government and it's settled mm -hmm. um where where do you think theater and performance has its place now for you? Where do you think it can make a difference? Can it at all? Como você acha que é o, o lugar da, das peças de teatro e do teatro em geral? E você acha que ele pode fazer uma diferença agora? Uh, eu sou professora de dramaturgia e continuo dando aulas, dou aulas online. E eu percebo que ler peças e pensar o teatro e relembrar, evocar o teatro é uma forma de se manter vivo nesse momento. Uh, she is also a, a playwriting teacher and she, what she has noticed during her online classes is that uh, to read theater and to remember theater and to relive theater uh, is a very helpful tool to, to remain alive and remain more or less same in this, in this current crisis. Nunca we deixou de haver teatro. Sorry, Roberta. Nunca deixou de haver teatro. Não importa a pandemia, teatro sempre aconteceu, de um jeito ou de outro, dentro dos espaços ou fora dos espaços. Yeah, no matter the crisis that happened throughout history, there has always been theater. And it always, has always happened, no matter if it was within uh, the term spaces or not, it has always existed and happened. 
recently with, with Nucleo Bartolomeu, the company, we, we are still discussing and talking. We have one day uh, in the week to sacred day to discuss and say the things we are thinking, we are reading, and also with a company that I'm directing, they called, it's called Ubond, it's a black theater company that we are also talking, watching movies, reading the play we're going to do, like feeding these, feeding the fire, you know, never letting it die. Mm -hmm. I think even under the dictatorship, theater was uh, putting up a form of resistance, free groups, outside performances, uh, festivals, and it was part of a social change um, that anticipated the end um, of that. But um, so in your group, in your reading group where you are preparing, what do you talk about when you say we, we sit together and we talk, uh, Roberta, what do you talk about? Well, we, we, first of all, we, we talk, uh, how, how are you doing people? Because this is important also uh, talk. How, 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 how are you feeling moving in the middle of this? Because otherwise we're going just, producing and let's do something. And I think we have to be very uh, human, but we are looking back. It's strange. We are looking to the, because it's 20 years of my company this year. It was supposed to be the year that we are going to be, be like celebrating 20 years of company. Mm -hmm. And we are, wow, this is happening in our 20 years anniversary. So we, we, I think we are looking back and trying to, to uh, take a look to our uh, story, tra trajectory, and to comprehend in the moment we are, to trying to, trying to imagine a, a future, but we don't know what it is, but trying to, right, I, we are taking this look back to see more or less where are we, and to see more or less where are we going. But nobody knows, like, comes to this reunion saying, well, people, so we are in this situation. Let's, nobody knows. If somebody says that knows these people, maybe it's, it's crazy. But we talk about what, was, what we've been doing in these 20 years and what we're gonna do if we can be in front of an audience till December, because we are asking this theater happens, this theater, we are going to make like pieces recording and showing what we're going to do and, and other lots, lot, lots of subjects also, like slavery, that it's a, a, a ghost, as dictatorship, that is a ghost. It's our two problems in Brazil that lead us to here, we think. And so we are racial uh, subjects. We are always discussing it, this still all the time, for example. Why did you start your company 20 years ago? Take us back to that moment. When did you start it and what were your dreams? So Claudia Shapira, who is our director and playwright, she was researching about the city issues. And he saw Eugenio Lima, who is our musical and director also, dancing because he, ha he has a, a, a street dance company and she wanted this pose. She said, this is what I'm missing in my theater. So they were together. So the, hip the theater met hip hop. And so I, I came, Lua came and other people. And well, our wishing was to discuss the, the problems, the situation of living in a city like Sao Paulo, like being, being black in Sao Paulo, being women in Sao Paulo, being deal with the, the beauty and the tragedy that a big city like Sao Paulo uh, brings. Uh, so we operate in this, in the city. Sao Paulo is our inspiration uh, with the problematics and the beauties. And uh, I don't know, we didn't know that we, we didn't know that we were a company. We just started with, with common wish, willings. 
And then when we saw we were 20 years making it together and creating a language, and then this became our most beautiful dream. We, we create theater, hip hop theater, actor MC, and all the, the stuff we created together. Language is the most preci precious thing that we have to spread. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dion, how did, how did you get into theater and why did you feel uh, it could make a contribution to, to also to the city of Sao Paulo? É, como você começou no teatro? Por que você entrou no teatro? Por que você achou que poderia ser uma contribuição para São Paulo? Eu comecei no teatro como atriz. É, trabalhei muito tempo com um grande ator aqui de São Paulo, chamado Renato Borg, que me ensinou sobre atuação. Ele é uma das pessoas que participa da fundação do Grupo Oficina, que é bem conhecido aqui. É, e depois percebi que eu... Uh, não me via nas dramaturgias que eu lia, não via pessoas como eu na dramaturgia que eu lia. E daí eu decidi Let's escrever. Translate. One second. Let's translate. Uh, she started off as an actress, and she started off working with a very famous Brazilian actor called Renato Borghi, who is the founder of a very big project here mm. called Oficina. And as she began acting more, she realized that she wasn't represented by by the characters she saw in, in, in those plays. And so she was seeking out for a different sort of narrative. Também porque eu acho que a dramaturgia é, é um lugar de criação de imaginário. Mm. E para a gente ter uma dramaturgia múltipla, a gente precisa ter múltiplas vozes. And also because she believes uh, playwriting is, is, a, is the biggest tool to create different narratives and to create a certain... Mm general narrative. So in order for us to have those different narratives that are more diverse, you need different voices. And she wanted to be one of those voices. It's basically the same reason and the same contribution. For me, the same answer. Mm -hmm. um, if you think of the Sao Paulo, the city you love and do your theater for, and um, do, do, what do you imagine that, uh, let's say, Corona is over? Um, what what uh, will will you be doing? Do you feel this moment is changing uh, how you think about theater? Will you do what you did before, but in a stronger way or in a, in a different way? What what will be the consequences of this time for you of being at home for sixty days? When the Corona, how do you think it will be your script, your theater? E como você acha que vai te afetar ficar nessa quarentena, quando tudo acabar, como vai, o que vai mudar em você? Eu acho que é, eu tenho pensado é, mais em nós do que em eu, no eu. Acho que vai ser um teatro de muitos nós. É, também entendendo um pouco melhor as relações é, de poder, inclusive dentro do próprio teatro. Uh, aqui o teatro está submetido, inclusive. Uh, she believes that uh, theater will become much more of a collective experience for her instead of a, a more individual one. Uh, in a way that uh, we're now able to understand more or less the power relationships that have been going on in Brazil and inside Brazilian theater itself. Eu acho Maybe que... É, sorry, Roberta, só uma não, coisa. Não é, eu acho que, ah, adiante das dificuldades que a gente está enfrentando agora, isso vai nos forçar a pensar e talvez tomar algumas atitudes que a gente estava adiando, até por uma questão de conforto, né, de, de estar num certo privilégio. Agora a gente vai ser obrigado a pensar alternativas para o que a gente estava acostumado. Eu acho que acaba o um mundo e começa um novo mundo. Uh, she believes that due to this crisis, artists will have to to take another look at, at, at the circumstances and to take certain attitudes and certain stands that they had not been taking, maybe because they were in a place of privilege in Sao Paulo, and that now uh, represents, in a way, the end of a certain reality, of a certain world, and the start of a new one. And so that's, those are the changes she believes will happen mostly here in, in Sao Paulo theater. Só mais uma coisa, uhum. tem, uma, tem uma frase da dramaturga Grace Passot, 
que é uma dramaturga brasileira, num texto ela diz que venham todos os fins porque eu sei recomeçar. Eu acho que isso nós, brasileiras, brasileiros, a gente sabe fazer muito bem. Uh, there's a common saying by a Brazilian playwright called Grisi Passou that says that may all ends come because I know how to start over. And it's, in her opinion, a very important part of the Brazilian spirit and Brazilians can do that very well. And that must be translated into theater to move forward and to evolve. Yeah, yeah. I agree with all that Dionne said. And we hope that things uh, are different when we were out of this and we were together with out of uh, the circle we always had been and thinking more collective more with the peripheries of the city, exchanging more out of our circles. And the urgencies, I think they will change. What is, what is urgent? Because the relationship with death changes. You can be there tomorrow, you can, you, the, the, with the body, how I, I imagine how it's going to be uh, the, the, the physical contact, what, what would it, the, the urgencies, the, I think we are, we, ha, we are having a lot of questions right, right now and uh, we, we're going to have messy answers and some, some ways to go, some new ways, some old trying to come and we, uh, we will, our perception would be more refined I think. É, eu queria te falar só da Brasilândia, que é um, um lugar, um bairro, uma comunidade de São Paulo é, que está totalmente desassistida e é a mais atingida é, pelo vírus. Eu dou aula na Brasilândia, é, nós fazemos parte de um projeto lá. E é importante dizer, eu acho que essa resposta virá desses lugares, dos lugares que estão conseguindo se articular para variar, como sempre, no Brasil. Uh, para sobreviver, eu acho que a, a vem da periferia para o centro essa resposta, a solução ou um caminho. A Chiquitinha is in a in a very poor neighborhood at the periphery of the of the city that is named Brasilândia, and it's where the the death percentage has been most fatal uh, in the city. And she believes that that solution uh, for the narrative for the many problems that theater has been facing, uh, will come in a process of going from the, those regions in towards the center, not the opposite. A resposta também vem do canto das indígenas para mim. É, é uma outra forma de encarar o que a gente está vivendo. Eu acho que nesses lugares a gente vai encontrar um caminho para lidar com o que a gente está lidando. She believes that the answers will also come from indigenous writers and the communities in general. Uh, those are those are the places that perhaps have been the most neglected and where the voices are the hardest to hear. But maybe the solutions and the difference in which they deal with these problems and the current crisis uh, will be the, the main way to find an answer. So uh, numbers, um, I think just yesterday, you know, numbers were, were staggering. I almost hear from very little, finally, to four, five hundred dead people in a day. Most probably the numbers are much, much higher. Um, how, how is this situation, the favelas or in the, in, the, in the periphery, you know, of the cities where people live so close together and uh, share space, also have a sense of a community and staying together? Uh, do you all feel that this uh, catastrophe is coming or is it, do you feel you already have the crisis behind you? Well, we have five times uh, more black people killed by coronavirus in Brazil than white people. So this says a lot of our uh, uh, slavery. So 500% slavery, higher. Mm -hmm. Five times. Yeah. So uh, this, this says about our country, about the, yesterday was the abolition day, abolition day, that we say that this is a false abolition because who died? 
like in the US, are black people still who are in the favelas are black people still? So is a uh, is a situation that is, is growing, growing as uh, Dion mentioned, is a necropolitics acting and a necroliberalism. Liberalism, necropolitics is a is a term by Professor Schiller Nand, that is a, a a mentor for for many people when are discussing this colonialism. So the the word of order right now is decolonization, decolonization of the the relationship the relationships, and you have this. Yesterday, I saw in, in Erica's, Erica's Badu Instagram, they killed two boys. They're killing policy in America and in Brazil. We have two idiots. Trump is an, is an idiot uh, like Bolsonaro and racist and a slave master as him. And so the periphery is suffering with corona as it is suffering with policy. Uh, militarization or any disease, dengue or anything, because they are in, in, in a situation since the abolition of slavery that is mm -hmm. under un, under any help, under any attention by the government or stuff like that. Uhum. Antes do vírus, a gente já tinha um vírus, é, um vírus que mata muita gente o tempo inteiro, principalmente pessoas pobres, pessoas negras nesse país, mulheres. Então, é, eu acho, eu espero uma catástrofe, sim. Acho que vem uma catástrofe. Uh, before Corona itself, there was already sort of a virus installed in, in Brazil in which that killed many, many poor people, many black people, many women. And uh, she believes that a catastrophe is on its way for sure. A gente está com 13.149 mortes. Nós temos comunidades indígenas onde o vírus já chegou. Então, sim, a gente vai ter uma catástrofe. Já estamos vivendo essa catástrofe. São 13.149 vidas. Uh, the, the latest uh, infected and no, the latest death uh, numbers were 13,149 people. And the main thing is that the virus has already, already reached a lot of indigenous communities and obviously the peripheral communities in, in the big cities and the small cities. So it's already a catastrophe on its own and it will only get worse, that's for sure. I, re I heard, I read something yesterday that was saying, so Manuel uh, explaining to people, don't say uh, a 13,000 of COVID cases of COVID, use COVID uh, person because they are person, not cases, numbers, mm -hmm. social mm -hmm. security number or CPF, as we say here, they are people. A lot human beings, and this is very important in the language we use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we heard of reports that uh, indigenous uh, populations are not warned, that even festivities where they come together were not uh, interrupted or forbidden uh, because they had, didn't know so much about it. And that there is perhaps uh, 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 the uh, idea that it's a welcome. Uh, interruption that you know the deforestation the using of the forest and the the, the um, deployment of indigenous people on their own lands you know will advance much faster with the virus do you think mm -hmm. this is a an open political uh, agenda behind it against uh, also the indigenous acha que essa liberação do do corona, o fato de não terem avisado as comunidades ou interrompido festividades, é, faz parte de um projeto político em relação à deflorestação e à destruição dessa cultura em geral? Sim, mas isso, isso os próprios indígenas já sabem, nós também sabemos, né? É, eu acho que ninguém mais tem a ilusão de depender desse governo para nada, ou, ou dos outros governos também. Eu acho que tem uma frase da Sueli Carneiro, que é uma pensadora aqui brasileira, ela diz... É, direita ou esquerda, eu continuo sendo negra, né, então, é, 
embora a esquerda tenha, tenha olhado né, para as questões indígenas e dos negros, mas é, eu acho que isso é um plano, um projeto. Yeah, it, she believes that it's a project that has been going on uh, for a long time now, even before the virus. And the indigenous communities are aware that they, they cannot depend on, on the government to, to assist them. They know that the government is against them. Um, so it, it, it's, it's for sure a, a political project, but it's been going on for years. And obviously, you can argue that left or right uh, uh, candidates have been more or less more supportive. But at the end of the day, they know that they cannot count on the government to be Uh, to help them. Mm -hmm. So do you think, I think, um, um, Dion, you said that you think it, this will be a rapture, it will be in Brazilian history, will it be Corona time? You said things will be different. Do you feel people will reconsider political choices they made and it will turn to a better society, new forms, better forms will be found or do you think it will get worse after the Corona? For both of you, the question, of course. É, você acha que esse momento do corona vai ser uma ruptura e as pessoas vão repensar as escolhas políticas? É, vão haver mudanças grandes ou, na verdade, vai tudo piorar em relação a isso? Uh, eu acho que os dois. Acho que vai piorar. Uh, eu acho que as pessoas fanatizadas estão mais fanatizadas, mas as pessoas que se organizam socialmente há muito tempo, né, pensando nesse nós por nós, elas mais do que nunca estão pensando caminhos, rotas de fuga e entrando em contato com outras, uh, outras possibilidades de mundo, outras ideias de mundo. Uh, she believes that uh, it will, at the same time, get worse and get better. She believes that those who have fallen prey of the, uh, the political fanatism for the president, they won't get worse, and they have been getting worse progressively. And the corona situation won't aggravate that issue. But on the other hand, people who have been engaging in thinking in collective solutions and in social organizations uh, will find new possibilities and, and work even harder to find new ways of standing and helping the country. Yes. In the other end, you have the male white rich people in Brazil that have this, this heritage from straight from the slave masters they are slave masters, modern slave masters, that don't, don't want to, get, to, to, to let go of their privileges. And they are most, 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 most like embracing these privileges and don't wanna let it go. And, but is it that if peace is not for everybody, it will be to no one. It will be to no one. It's an illusion to think if you are closed in your uh, uh, rich house, you, you are going to live with fear. The, the price that we're going to pay because of all this, this falling down of the cultural institutions, falling down of educational institutions in Brazil would be very, very expensive. The, 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 the social price we are seeing Yesterday I went out to, to buy some food. The only thing that we are doing outside and you see the, the massive quantity of people living in the streets, the, 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 the increasing of the, the number of these people, of miserables, of people. And it's, it's going to be in three years. So, so a lot you of horses. The homeless population is growing. People are more and more people are living on the streets. Yeah. Lord, since Bolsonaro came in, since Doria came in, in the, 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 came to be the mayor, surely, surely. Entering families, the... various families. Many families are forced to yeah. live on the street, which of course, in a time of Corona is a devastating uh, um, situation for, for them, for the families, and, but also for everybody. So uh, all the social and political problems are, are, are so open. Um, when it comes to theater and performance, and, um, and of course, there's the famous Augusto Boal, who came out of Brazil, actually started out in politics and gave up and felt only theater and performance can make a change. And he created specific methods. But 
<clears throat> what did you feel or what do you think will work? Or what, how do you reach your audience in, in Sao Paulo? Now you are without a ministry of culture, without support. Um, even theaters are closed down. Um, what do you feel from your history, from your experience, but also what do you think? What do you think could be forms of theater performance to make it relevant, that people will listen, that it will help them to come to terms with a new reality? Is there something where you feel this is the thing we all should be doing? Uh, você acha que tem algum jeito, alguma solução para fazer com que o teatro volte a se conectar, as pessoas de teatro voltem a se conectar com as pessoas e a se ajustar a essa nova realidade? Apesar de todas as eu circunstâncias. Acho, eu acho que é, nesse momento, para mim, pelo menos, é impossível é, pensar como uh, realizar isso. Uh, eu me sinto numa guerra, diante de uma guerra, e, de algum modo, lutando para que o teatro não seja uh, varrido, né? para que o teatro não não desapareça. E tenho feito isso a partir dos trabalhos que seguem né, para os encontros com grupos e com os alunos. Mas acho que a gente, no momento aqui no Brasil, é, a gente está tentando sobreviver. Né, não morrer, não morrer antes da morte chegar. É isso que a gente está tentando fazer agora. Então, fica difícil imaginar, né, fazer qualquer tipo de... É, tem um texto do Aito Krenak que diz o amanhã, quer dizer, é, um livro dele que falou amanhã não está à venda, que ele fala disso, é importante viver cada dia. Não consigo ter essa projeção a longo prazo do que fazer. Uh, she believes that in the current moment is not... It's not possible to even uh, project or try to imagine uh, what can be done in the future because it's a matter of survival. Uh, artists and theater itself has been just trying to not be swept away and not to disappear. And she has been doing that by encountering with many companies and uh, engaging with her students and keep on keeping on writing. But right now, the, the circumstances are that they're just trying not to disappear. They try not to die before death, death itself. And uh, for them to, to try to create a future or to imagine a future, um, why well, it all comes after being able to just survive. Yeah, I agree. I agree and bring people who are not actors or dramaturgs or directors because we have a legion of people who are light, light designers who work with things that they can make a video and say something like an actor or an actress like me can do. There are people that uh, are uh, sewing the, the costumes and a legion of people that are not work, they are not working anyway. And these people are part of uh, the imagination also and we are, how can we, we bring these people together so it, it was uh, it was what Dion was saying. The food first is an emergency of time. We are in the, in the emergency. Eat and, and live and have the basic, and then we we are going to because dead you can you can do shit mm -hmm. even theater. So it's really existential. It's about uh, starving to death uh, as, a, as a fear, like uh, so people in favelas, but also the, the artists, the country of Brazil is not taking care of its artists. It's neglecting them, actually op openly hostile. This is shocking reports uh, from a great country, the country that has uh, brought so much uh, to the world of joy and, uh, and uh, engagement and artistic uh, quality, whether it's in painting and writing or Nelson Rodriguez and also in, in, in games uh, that are played or music um, that comes from it. It's, it's shocking account. Do you, how is it for you the day? Do you both have any time? Do you even write? Do you read something? Uh, do you engage uh, um, with, uh, with art in your, in your days, in your confinement? How is it for you? Do you have time to write, to write? É, se envolve com os grupos para comunicar como é que está sendo a sua quarentena? É, fora a pesquisa de trabalho é, para a elaboração de textos, né? tem um grupo que eu estou trabalhando agora, que é a Companhia dos Inventivos. A gente está pesquisando sobre Maria Auxiliadora, que foi uma artista plástica incrível. É, 
eu tenho me dedicado muito a ler um livro chamado O Oráculo da Noite, do Siddhartha Ribeiro, uh, que fala dos sonhos. Acho que dá para ir traduzindo, Dan. Tá? Não ficar muito longo. Uh, besides research and uh, obviously trying to to learn new narratives, uh, she has been doing close by research uh, uh, of a book written by an artist called Siddhartha Ribeiro, who's actually a, ne a neuroscientist, and it's called Oráculo da Noite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, e tenho lido também a as obras uh, do Ailton Krenak, principalmente Ideias para Diar o Fim do Mundo. Uh, então, tenho me dedicado a ler, tenho escrito menos, mas lido bastante e continuo dando as aulas, né? dando minhas aulas de dramaturgia. Ela uh, também tem lido um livro de um autor brasileiro chamado Ailton Krenak, que uh, se traduz como Ways to Postpone the End of the World. So she has been writing less, but she's been been trying to read more and research more and find new sources. Mm -hmm. And how about you? How is it for you? Yeah, I'm researching with these companies I'm involved in and reading the, the readings uh, of these works and also reading a lot of pieces of stuff, like starting lots of book and seems that no, no book, no one, nothing gives the answer so I'm, I'm i work with sample a lot so i'm sampling and trying to write and recovering old projects and seeing to best tests and i work with the slam community also here the poetry slam so the poets we are trying to organize it because we have 220 communities here in 20 states in brazil And so we are dealing with these communities and also helping and thinking together what, we, what can we do because they are, all, they are all young people. They had these agoras open to tell their stories, their ideas, and all of a sudden, all is closed. Mm -hmm. And all these feelings, all this, this tests, all these things that, all these things that the, these agoras was, were healing just this is a youth that don't have space to say it so we are we are working in mm -hmm. projects to to help yeah, we, them we are coming, also. yeah we're coming close to an end so you both uh, uh work uh, with students neon but also roberto what do you tell young artists what do you tell students how to deal with this moment okay first o que você diz para os seus estudantes e para artistas jovens é, em relação a esse momento? Fiquem vivos e observem, escutem esse silêncio, o silêncio desse momento. Mas, sobretudo, fiquem vivos e vivas. Para os seus estudantes, ela diz, stay alive, survive, and make sure you You pay close attention and listen well to the silence that has been echoing throughout all around the city. But it's above all to stay alive and survive. So to listen to the silence, I would you say... say. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Roberta. Uh, for me, I would say what I what I I would say what I'm saying to myself is something like a mantra be be present in the present be present in the present be the quality of presence in each stuff you are doing just what what we have is the present the only thing that we have is the present so be present in quality it doesn't matter if you're gonna be like 10 minutes doing something be there this 10 minutes uh, talking to someone or taking a shower reading or helping donating Be there, like with your body or soul, with, with your complete, because the present, the present is all we have. Mm -hmm. Well, Willy, really, thank you, thank you both, and this is a good reminder to, to listen to the silence, to be present in the present, and also to participate 
uh, in the in the communities and prepare for for what is coming. It's a shocking uh, uh, account uh, from Brazil, and uh, perhaps it's not really clear also to the outside world how desperate uh, the situation is that artists are really uh, afraid of starving, that they don't have any any support in theirs for months, maybe for a year, nothing um, on the horizon. So. Um, it is shameful. The state of theater always is, and the arts, a, a little business card of any society of a city. If it's alive, if it's uh, vibrant, if it's open, and once the arts are in good shape, uh, you can see that things are working, that governments are right, and if not, uh, you see disastrous moments like you are experiencing there. We do hope, uh, as uh, Dion said, that the, the forces and energy of Brazil to make new starts and to redo what's wrong and put it into right will, will be there and that uh, the social justice and pro progress uh, will, will, will take its way. And uh, it's really heartbreaking uh, to hear um, your accounts, but uh, your work is important there. And I know coming also out of the slam poetry and rap movement and all of it, you know, you all do important work and you with your students. So we watch, of course, what is happening in Brazil. We have had many evenings about Brazilian theater, contemporary theater at the Siegel Center. Um, you both haven't been there, but um, Isabella Pinheiro from the great Ivoe Ensemble in New York is a, a group of Brazilian artists who also already felt in Brazil it's so hard to do work. Maybe it's better to do it outside, which is a very sad and, uh, um, and, um, and, and uh, regretful uh, thoughts of young artists to, to be immigrants of their countries. But they said, you are the ones to talk to and you would be the ones who really can give us an account of what is of the significance to know about it from Brazil and Sao Paulo. So thank you for taking the time. And uh, maybe we check in and later on uh, how, how it all will be going. But I wish you all good energy and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we send our very best and hope that there will ways will be found, you know, to 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 support artists. That this is the moment now to really support artists, perhaps less producing and doing, but really supporting you. And I hope that will, your community will find ways to to um, also support you. Um, we are coming close to the end of week seven. It's incredible that for such a long time we are doing this now. Um, we are the only theater institution we know of uh, in the Americas, perhaps also in Europe, that every day is producing a new content to talk uh, about Corona, about art, about meaning. Um, we do it every day. And I think it's uh, rewarding for all of us to hear from around the world. And uh, it helps us to get through this, but also to perhaps rethink and update our own hard drives of uh, what, we, what we think. Tomorrow we will hear from Cameroon, Edouard Elvis uh, Vuma will be here with Armin Yo, and they will talk about Cameroon. Maybe also you guys listen in and hear what is going on in that place uh, that in a way also is close you know, to, to Brazil. And, um, and I uh, want to thank our listeners for taking the time to listen to artists from around the world. It's important and meaningful for them to know that people are listening, that people care, and that in a way we are all in this uh, together. So uh, thank you for listening. It means a lot to us and know how much is out there and how much more and more gets out there. So it's uh, important for us. And thanks to HowlRound for hosting us, um, Thea and Travis and uh, Talia. Um, so um, and to our Siegel team, so I uh, hope to all uh, see you again, hope you again tomorrow and next week. Uh, stay all safe and stay tuned and, uh, and good luck. And uh, we all hope you'll be safe and healthy. Bye-bye.